The uh, MSI Sexpert Lab, this is where we actually do a lot of incident response and a lot of forensic analysis for uh, cybersecurity incidents that are affecting state and local government. Yeah. And this is also the room where we have uh, our partners, law enforcement partners, we have representatives from uh, United States Secret Service, we have Immigration and Customs Enforcement, and uh, ATF. And uh, what we do is we try to uh, create an environment where uh, everybody who is working on cybersecurity intrusion cases can come in, do their analysis, but also share that information among each other and try to put the pieces together to see the big picture. Let me talk about the big picture. Uh, what we mean is uh, that in many instances uh, we came across cases where individual agencies were working on specific cyber intrusion cases and somehow they were related and they were uh, connected in the background but because we didn't share that information because we weren't able to uh, pass that information among each other we were able to connect those dots so in this environment we are able to do that when we are doing the cyber analysis either it's forensic analysis for com uh, computer intrusions or uh, network forensics uh, we share what we find so that uh, each agent can correlate that information and say yes I'm working a similar case they have the similar uh, tools, techniques, and procedures, TTPs, so that uh, they can make those connections and we can understand the true scope of the incident that we are dealing with. And we have came across many cases like that where we were able to turn a small case into a very large uh, nation-level uh, intrusion case. You said you, just right here, have come across a number of different cases Absolutely. that have led to national cases. Yeah. And um, does this mean that there's different groups or, or crime rings out there that are stealing people's information and then using it to steal other things even. Absolutely. So uh, what we do is we try to categorize each intrusion into four different buckets. Uh, we are basically every day dealing with four distinct group of people. The first group is what we call secret kiddies. And those people are kids who are uh, learning these new techniques and they're just going out and trying new things. They really don't have any any uh, other motivation than getting their name out. The second group is financially motivated attackers. These are actual crime rings and uh, these people have uh, software developers working on their staff developing these malicious softwares that are being through various uh, vulnerabilities that are being installed on end users computers and uh, that specific software listens every keystroke that you punch and uh, it will capture your credit card information it will capture your social security numbers and send it out to an attacker who can then take that information and cash in on it and the way they go about cashing on that information is uh, they can sell your credit card information on the black market or they can uh, take that credit card information and use it to purchase goods and services and turn those services into uh, money. Now, is this a problem that, I guess, people here in the capital region are this dealing a, this with? A, this is a problem across the world. Okay. This is a problem across the world. We are not, we are not unique in, in, that, in that sense. Uh, we are seeing this type of attacks coming from various parts of the world and going to various parts of the world. Uh, I was talking about the different groups we are we are dealing with. The third group is the hacktivist groups, and these are the groups that really have a political agenda, and they are going about uh, pushing that agenda across the internet. And the fourth group is the more serious group, which are type of attacks that are sponsored by nation states. So that's that's another problem we are dealing with. Yes. So whenever we have an intrusion case, we try to take that case and put it into one of those buckets because each bucket requires a different types of incident response. Can you explain to me what kind of intrusion cases you see the most? Well, in most cases, uh, we are going to see financially motivated attackers because uh, the end users are unfortunately not uh, doing the great job of keeping their systems up to date with the patches or making sure that their passwords are uh, as strong as it should be. So uh, these attackers, uh, through various vulnerabilities, are uh, installing these malware on the end user systems and uh, stealing their information. And those are the types of attacks that we are seeing the most. Okay, so is this, this is credit card fraud, what you're saying? Yes. Okay, so they're going, they're using different sorts of software to hack into other people's computers to steal their information, their credit card information, their bank account information, right. and that way they can take that and put that on maybe, let's say, a 
a random other credit card and then use that credit card. Exactly. So okay. that, that's one way of caching in on that information. As soon as they steal that credit card information, they can actually produce a hard credit cards that they can take and go out shopping and uh, buy goods and services. So, that, oh, But other way is uh, they can, in a larger scale, they can capture thousands of credit cards and sell those credit cards on the black market. And that brings uh, somewhere between $1 to $10 per credit card. So that it, it, it can bring significant amount of money. Do you see these sort of crimes, I guess, increase during this time of year? I mean, absolutely. This is, that's a great question because, uh, unfortunately, we are not as careful as we should be, especially during the uh, the holiday season. And uh, there is a extreme amount of increase in the uh, online shopping. We see a huge increase during the, the during these three months of the year. Well, what can you? What is this room that we're in right now? This is uh, the MSISAC, Multistate ISAC Computer Emergency Response Teams Lab, so I'm CERT for short. And in this lab, this is uh, where we do most of our incident response and forensic analysis. Okay. So does that mean you are trying to stop these people from doing what they're doing, or can you just see it when it happens, or, or what do you see? Both. I mean, through our monitoring services, we can see online crime while being committed. Or in certain cases, uh, we can see it before it's committed because people like to talk about this kind of stuff. So attackers, uh, we monitor different chat rooms, we monitor uh, uh, various online forums where attackers like to share that information and we can pick up on the pieces and say, okay, this is where they're going to attack next. Let's contact them next, make sure that their security level is up to date so that they don't become compromised. And lastly, uh, unfortunately, Compromises are occurring, and uh, this is the place where we actually do analyze the evidence that's available to us and answer the questions as to uh, who came in, when they came in, how did they come into your network, and what did they take away from your network. So these hackers, are they from across the seas, or are they here? And hackers are from across the world. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, I guess if we need to... Uh, put some characteristics around them, we can say that uh, most of the time they are coming from uh, not fully developed countries. Okay. Because that's where financial crimes are, uh, I guess, more valuable. 